Welcome to the Cross Canada Spotlight. I'm Mike Arsenault. Every week we take a look at some of the most interesting and entertaining stories produced across the Global News Network. We go to the Maritimes for our first story of the week where female veterans are getting emotional support from equine therapy. Equine therapy is a tool that uses activities between horses and humans to improve mental health. I've heard of it before, but I've never seen it in action. Let's take a look. Michelle McIsaac finds comfort in horses, the animals helping her heal from past traumas. Horses, I think, create a safe container, if that makes sense. There is this sense of um, safety and protection. McIsaac served in the Canadian Armed Forces as a social work officer from 2004 to 2009 when she was medically released with PTSD. Transitioning into civilian life, isolating, says the veteran, who didn't know where to turn. There was an obvious gap for um, a place or a, a group that understood how women's experiences in the military might be different from their male counterparts. And so she worked with the Free Spirit Therapeutic Riding Association in Aylesford, Nova Scotia to create Spirit, equine-assisted psychotherapy sessions specifically for female veterans. Lead the horse around the ring. Elisa Q, a certified equine specialist, led the sessions last year to a group of 16 women. They were taking charge and leading the horses around and tackling the obstacles head on. Um, it was just impressive to see the amount of growth in such a short period of time. The horses helping women cope and improving their quality of life. We really therapeutically ended up seeing a reduction in symptoms that they had presented with, so um, lots of reduced anxiety, some better sleep, um, and then what was really exciting too is some sustained relationships that came out of that. The first session proved so successful that Veterans Affairs Canada granted the Free Spirit Therapeutic Riding Association $90,000 to offer an 18-month program which starts mid-May for up to 64 female veterans. Well, I think it's a huge success to get this kind of recognition in a rural area and you know working with an all-women's group. For McIsaac, the funding served as validation, saying she's excited to see where spirit goes. The last couple of years have been a real strain on lots of us and our well-being. Um, the, the way through that and on the other side is through the people around us. Hoping horses and community help heal others who are struggling. Ashley Field, Global News, Aylesford, Nova Scotia. It is an interesting way to approach mental health treatment. It appears as though it revolves around walking with horses rather than riding them. And I guess that makes sense. I've only ridden a horse once in my life and I was anything but calm. I think my horse could tell that I was stressed and wanted nothing to do with me. This was also like 25 years ago. Maybe I literally need to get back on the horse. Sticking with the theme of therapy and animals, meet Gaia the therapy dog who helps sick kids at a children's hospice in BC. Canuck Place Children's Hospice serves as a home away from home for so many incredible kids. But what home is complete without a four-legged companion? Meet Gaia, the yellow lab trained by Pat, who's been working at Canuck Place for just over a year. She gives me access to other people. When I bring her along with me, as opposed to just being Camara the nurse practitioner, I'm Camara and Gaia. Actually, Gaia and Camara. Camara is one of the nurses who founded Canuck Place more than 25 years ago. And while she never thought the job would include dog handler, Gaia has provided an extra layer of care. How do we use her as a tool to provide distraction? Um, when we're having a difficult conversation or, you know, breaking some news that might be difficult for a family. Oh, yeah. How do we just have fun? For the Sadat family from Afghanistan, Gaia is exactly that. A much needed comfort and distraction. Never seen a dog like her. <laughs> so she's helped me, not only my family or my sister, but she's helped me get through a lot of stressful times. Much of that family's stress is based around Neta. Born in 2015 with multiple health issues, Neda and Gaia built a bond right away. Do you like the dog? Yeah. yeah. You want one? Oh. She want to go outside. She want to play, but it's a little bit difficult to uh, somebody understand her. Yeah. Dogs make her happy, safe. She feels safe. Neda was a ferocious fighter, but passed away in May of 2021. But not before saying one final goodbye. To Gaia. Nidal had someone's, you know, someone's hand to hold. 
I feel like that hand was Gaia's. She, um, Gaia really walked with her through every step. She's put her head in the, her foot of Nida and she's start crying. So I never forgot this and then I love dog, all dogs and mostly Gaia. <laughs> the Sadat family now have three dogs of their own. No, While Samaya is going into nursing school where she hopes to be a dog oh, handler. There we go. <laughs> Paul Hasem, Global News. Come on, come on. Wow, that story was heart wrenching. But dogs really are amazing animals who can provide such incredible comfort to people. I've always been a dog person. My entire family is happier when my dog Cookie is around, except when she has an accident on the carpet. But I digress. Back to the Maritimes, Nova Scotia this time for a feature on a very special bakery doing its part to provide a great experience for customers, but also to their employees as well. A sense of pride is felt as you walk in the doors at the North End Baking Company and warm smiles are ready to greet. You won't get a welcome like it anywhere else. It's got really good food, it's affordable and fun. The eight part-time employees all have intellectual or developmental disabilities and the cafe offers the participants an opportunity to develop their skills. I'm getting to know about the cashier now and it's like something new for me to do. The Prescott Group opened the cafe as a way to be more involved in the community and it is as community oriented as it gets, offering free coffee and cookies to seniors every morning. And also we do some light cleaning and other services for local seniors. Although there have been some bumps in the road, Evans says business has been busier than anticipated. It's been really great to have people in and whenever we have even one person makes everyone so excited but we've been really busy. Handmade crafts and paintings are also for sale all crafted by participants at the Prescott group. And then they sell them and take the profit so we, we sort of provide a sales experience for them. It's just a great environment, it's cozy, everybody loves coming here. And it's all gluten free, serving a wide array of sweet treats and lunch on Thursdays and Fridays, the ingredients couldn't be more local. We have a community garden across the road, so we grow things through the year and then we use lots of those in our lunches and things, our salads and um, so very local. <laughs> so you're very proud to work here? Oh, very proud, yes. Oh, that's awesome. Very proud. I love it here. Awesome. You hope yeah. to work here for a very long time? When I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Until they carry me out. <laughs> Amber Friday, Global News, Halifax. I'd visit that bakery for sure. Everyone had a smile on their face, from the customers to the staff. That would be a great way to start your day, wouldn't it? And I have to admit, Gluten-free foods are tasting better than ever these days. It's almost at the point where if you did a blind taste test, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. We're heading back to BC for our next story, where a man has picked up a new hobby, turning discarded metal into works of art. Part-time artist James Howells is still learning the tricks of welding. It was his cousin who gave him a crash course and some sound advice. <laughs> Don't electrocute yourself. <laughs> Howells needed to find a new creative outlet and stumbled across an idea along some old tracks near his place north of Pemberton. And that's how the metal artist got his start, turning old discarded rail spikes into unique figures. It's trash. We should pick it up and, and turn it into something. Chainsaw, chain. Now he's collecting all kinds of scraps for his projects. Iron pipe from gas fitting. <laughs> Barbecue rotisserie. Bike pegs from my son's BMX bike. Don't tell him I took them. Turning them into choppers and lobsters, horse heads, and some real heavy metal. <laughs> oh, wait till you see my Gibson inside. The Gibson's better. This is art that's good for the environment. This is heavy metal and it just goes, it just gets, it, it's absorbed into the ground. An old clothesline. Uh, Thing. You can see there's sockets, there's gas fittings, there's nuts. This is a rotor from a lawnmower. And I recycle propane tanks. I made a really cool 1964 Volkswagen bus out of a 30 pound propane tank. It's at the point now where neighbors are leaving piles on his porch for him to work with. People clean out their shed. Oh, James would like this handful of nuts and bolts. This is a piece off of a router. 
Um, you can see his chain, a bicycle chain. Yeah, that's his holster. Yeah. If it ever, their house ever burns down, my art will still be there. <laughs> Everything is available for sale, even the prized horse head. It's become a good little side business, turning trash into treasures for his customers. They like seeing something being made out of nothing. And, and it, it really, it, people really appreciated that. Jay Durant, Global News. It's amazing what welding skill and an artistic mind can do. I don't have either, so I really can't fathom how James is able to see those designs within what is essentially trash. Okay, last up this week is a bit of a weird one. It's about Sasquatch and Bigfoot. And you may need an open mind for this, or you may not have what it takes to join the Sasquatch Society at Trent University. These Trent University students are on a mission, but they're not here looking for your typical wildlife, rather something or someone more specific. Oh, we're looking for Bigfoot. Ryan Willis is the founder of the Trent University Sasquatch Society, which is now about 150 members strong. This goes back hundreds and hundreds of years, and, and there's so much evidence and so much eyewitness and a lot of academics behind it. Evidence like that classic footage from the 60s, you know the one, the Patterson-Gimblin film that made Bigfoot famous. Now, this team is looking to find out more. We want to find it, obviously, and uh, do all the work and research we can. So they're speaking with the experts, like Dr. Jeff Meldrum, professor of physical anthropology at Idaho State University. He was called to examine possible Sasquatch tracks in Washington back in 1996. These were either hoaxed, cleverly hoaxed, or they were the real deal. 35, 45 clear footprints in the mud. It was such an impactful experience, the hair still stands up on my arms. Because, you know, that realization set in that, my gosh, they do exist. Now, despite those footprints and some 300 other sets Meldrum has examined since, there is still no concrete proof Sasquatch are real. Back on our expedition, no sightings for us yet, but it's time to, well, give Bigfoot a call. And if that doesn't work, club member Joel Porter has another idea. So I'm going to do a wood knock. Um, basically, a lot of researchers think it's a, it's a way that they used to communicate. And while the team admits finding Bigfoot here in southern Ontario is unlikely, with most substantiated North American accounts coming from the remote west coast, Porter and society member Sabrina Marie say they're having fun trying. Hearing a broad range of different viewpoints from different experts has been a really cool experience. Willis says they're hoping to expand the Sasquatch Society by opening up their database to other universities and to the public. Until then, our Bigfooting continues. Hey, you never know. Kaylee Bedore, Global News, Peterborough. Okay, I'm on the non-believer side here because there's been no video like that one we saw in the package from the 1960s. We haven't seen it here in the 2020s. And this is a time when everyone has an HD camera with them at all times. I think that's all the proof you need right there that Bigfoot isn't real. We'd have video of him by now, don't you think? I guess I won't be getting an admission into the Sasquatch Society anytime soon. Okay, that's it for the Cross Canada Spotlight. Be sure to watch Global News Weekend Saturday and Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. on the Global TV app and Prime Video.